Now, if it all seems rather infantile, you're not wrong. Universities are quickly becoming daycares for would-be adults. Feelings are valued over knowledge, and safe spaces are pushed over expanding your own boundaries and discovering yourself. In other words, universities have become victim factories, creating the permanently useless. I mean outraged. My apologies. But there's one person who knows a thing or two about safe spaces and overcoming victimhood. She's my next guest. Kimberly Corbin tours college campuses telling students her story of tragedy turned into power. And she has an opinion or two, or eight, about these safe spaces. Welcome, Kimberly. Hi, thanks for having me on, Brandon. Oh, it's always a pleasure. So glad you could join us today. Now, Kimberly, um, you're the first person I wanted to reach out to for this because it just seems like uh, you know, we, we could always get uh, an opinion from an expert or a professor, but you have a unique perspective. Um, and you truly know uh, what it is to make yourself safe to not be a victim. Uh, first off, I just kind of want to get, want you to give us a brief uh, history of, of, of your story so that it, we can set a background for what you're about to say. So, um, when I was 20 years old, I was attending the University of Northern Colorado in Greeley and a stranger broke into my college area apartment, held me in my room for two hours and raped me. And I had to lay there thinking that that was how I was going to die. I reported the attack. The Weld County District Attorney's Office uh, successfully prosecuted it with the help of the Greeley Police Department. And that man is currently serving a 24 year to life uh, prison sentence in the Department of Corrections in Colorado. Now, I had a, a lot of issues going back to school, staying in school, battling depression, PTSD, um, having to overcome that victim stereotype and transform myself into a survivor. I decided to release my name to the media in the hopes that I could just help one person not have to experience what I did on this um, really, really difficult journey. And that has proven to be my life's passion. And I have absolutely loved having the opportunity to speak to other campuses, to law enforcement, to prosecutors, um, to train at international conferences and have all of these outreach um, availabilities that help me teach others what it actually means to be a victim of an assault and how they can help themselves to overcome mm -hmm. that trauma. And I, and I love the fact that you have taken such a huge tragedy and made it into one of your greatest strengths and that you you kind of carry that message with you from university to university which as you told me at one point in time speaking at universities is your bread and butter these are people that you primarily communicate with so i can imagine when you hear a story uh... like com the one coming out of the university of arizona that the faculty instructs their students to say ouch when they're offended and uh... the f offender has to follow up with oops uh... you know it's, it seems rather infantile that they are encouraging victimization at these universities and i can only imagine you kimberly uh... do not see eye to eye with that kind of thing i'm gonna go ahead and give you the floor and stand back you sure about that <laughs> yeah go ahead so i've actually got a two and a three year old right now mm. and i'm teaching them the exact same thing shocking <laughs> uh, we do it in the form of please don't and may i have a turn and that is apparently what they're still going to be learning if they pursue higher education at the university of arizona so <laughs> steer them away from there but right. it is it what you said earlier kind of a victim factory there is no no glory in becoming a victim um, mm -hmm. I talk to any of them and I any like fellow victims and it is a struggle to get to the point where you can identify as a survivor instead yet we have these people who have their feelings hurt and suddenly want to regard themselves as victims mm -hmm. well that's not something that you should want, nor should you need to feel justified. What I think these universities are doing is pandering to this crowd that does not want to have to stand up for their beliefs or have conflicts or arguments. But at the end of the day, that's what's going to make them productive adults. That's what's going to make them a part of society that will contribute to the next generation. You have to learn how to argue your point, and you have to learn to do it without calling names and without saying, ouch. I don't care if your feelings are hurt, but <laughs> neither do facts. So yeah. really, you've got to get around this and think of a different way to maybe approach your classmate. If it's something that is legitimately concerning and you have a feeling that maybe needs to be addressed, talk to that person. Don't rely on a policy that a school puts in place that doesn't need to be there in the first place. If in other words, handle it like an adult. Oh, yes, thank you. It's so much face palm. I can't even tell you. Now, if you want to complain about 
student debt and the heaping loans and the amount that it costs to just attend a four-year university, uh, let's start with getting rid of the office that created this memo. And I, you'll have to tell me, I, if Sarah has it in her article, how many pages it was, it was something like seven pages on, ooch, ooh, ouch, and ooch, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry. Like, I, I don't need a thesaurus, and I don't need to be paying you that amount to get a higher education. So please back off and allocate those resources to something else. Yeah, something along the lines of, of maybe an education about actual things like you might encounter in the future <laughs> instead of handling things like, uh, you know, uh, minor situations with infantile language and, you know, hurt fifis. Um, so <laughs> going forward, however, uh, you know, if you were to actually give advice to a college, about how they should, you know, handle this kind of situation from your experience. And, and what I mean by that is uh, the victims, who, people who actually are victims. Right. Um, you know, to, to give them a little more attention and kind of start shying away from this whole, I'm a victim because you looked at me funny or right. because you microaggressed me because you have dreadlocks in your hair. You know, if you were to actually kind of step in to your own school, how would you actually kind of advise the faculty moving forward on how to handle actual victims? I think the biggest thing that, I mean, I'm, I'm touring campuses this semester and right. next semester speaking about this specifically yeah. because for those of us who have been victimized, especially in your time as a college student, it's tough to go through and be a productive member of your school, to get good grades, to maintain all of these things while maybe going through um, PTSD through counseling, through a trial like I did. And you have to reserve the catchphrases that the left has glommed onto, such as safe space, such as victim, such as trigger for the people that actually need it. Because after working in the advocacy world for so long, safe spaces are a real thing, but they were created with the intent of getting somebody who was legitimately triggered by something that may have to do with their PTSD following a very traumatic event, not having their feelings hurt, and getting them to a space where they can appropriately address that and maybe seek counseling or mental health therapy. So we have all of these words that have just become so politicized, whereas they've been being used in the victim advocacy world for a long time because that's who actually needs it. You need victims with appropriate allocation of resources and the legitimacy to back that up, not having students who want to play victim for having their feelings hurt. Uh, so take back the language. That message, yes. That's, so that's exactly a big part of it. It is. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us, Kimberly. Always, it's a pleasure. I hope to have yeah. you back soon. Absolutely. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. All right, I want to throw it.